crucial responsibility of any central bank is to control inflation, the average rate of increase in the prices of a broad group of goods and services. Keeping inflation stable at a moderately low level is important because for reasons I will discuss, inflation that is high, excessively low, or unstable imposes significant costs on households and businesses. As a result, inflation control is one half of the dual mandate that Congress has laid down for the Federal Reserve, which is to pursue maximum employment and price stability. The Federal Reserve has not always been successful in fulfilling the price stability element of its mandate. The dashed red line in this figure plots the four quarter percent change in the price index for personal consumption expenditures, or PCE, the measure of inflation that the Fed's policymaking body, the Federal Open Market Committee, or FOMC, uses to define its longer run inflation goal. Starting in the mid 1960s, inflation began to move higher. Large jumps in food and energy prices played a role in this upward move, but they were not the whole story. For as illustrated here, inflation was already moving up before the food and energy shocks hit in the 1970s and early 1980s. And if we look at core inflation, which is the solid black line, which excludes food and energy prices, we see that it too starts to move higher in the mid-1960s and rises to very elevated levels during the 1970s, which strongly suggests that something more than energy and food price shocks must have been at work. A second important inf feature of inflation over this period can be seen if we examine an estimate of its long-term trend which is plotted as the dotted black line in this figure. At each point in time, this trend is defined as the prediction from a statistical model of the level to which inflation is projected to return in the long run once the effects of any shocks to the economy have fully played out. As can be seen from the figure, this estimated trend drifts higher over the 1960s and 1970s, implying that during this period, there was no stable anchor to which inflation could be expected to eventually return. That's a conclusion generally supported by other procedures for estimating trend inflation as well. Today, many economists believe that these features of inflation in the late 1960s and 1970s, its high level and lack of a stable anchor, reflected a combination of factors, including chronically overheated labor and product markets, the effects of the energy and food price shocks, and the emergence of an inflationary psychology whereby a rise in actual inflation led people to revise up their expectations for future inflation. Together, these various factors caused inflation, actual and expected, to ratchet higher over time. As part of the deal, they're going to set up a massive plant in a big section of China. They're going to build planes over in China. And you tell me why. Why aren't they building them here and sending them? They're building them over there.